Jezebel is under your feet. But if you don't know that, if you don't know how to deal with the Jezebel spirit, then you are at a disadvantage. You know, scripture says in the book of Revelation, Revelation 2.20, that Jezebel comes, uh, well, scripture says Jezebel comes to kill, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But scripture says in Revelation 2.20, Jesus said to the church at Thyatira that I have this thing against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And so we see this Jezebel spirit early on in scripture in the book of Kings. And then we see this Jezebel spirit in the book of Revelation, and it's one and the same spirit. It's one and the same spirit. This is the same spirit. And now many people don't understand what a Jezebel spirit is, and we're going to get into that. I'm actually going to be teaching based on my book today, Unmasking Jezebel's Intercessors. It's number one on Amazon, and you have the opportunity to grab that right now with bonuses that are expiring through my website at jenniferleclair.org slash Jezebel. I also want to mention before we get into this Q&A that you can find a whole slew of courses that I've taught over the years on many different aspects of Jezebel. You can find that at schoolofthespirit.tv slash Jezebel, schoolofthespirit.tv slash Jezebel. So I want to get into this right now. I want to uh, begin to answer your questions. And some of you sent in questions early and some of you uh, may ask your questions live. I'm going to pull up the different uh, broadcasts here so that we can grab hold of this. I'm glad you're reading it. Now, uh, let's see. Give me a second as you come on in. I should have probably just waited for more of you to get in before I started, but I'm killing time here because I want to see. Where are we? Where are we? There we are. I've got it all pulled up. So we're going to begin to answer these questions, and I cannot promise you that I'll get all of them through all of them because there's probably going to be too many. But I think all many of you have the same sort of question. So let's get into this, but let's pray first. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are greater than Jezebel. You are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and you've made us more than conquerors in your name. So we ask you, Lord, today, Lord, let my let your, your wisdom be in my mouth and help me to articulate rightly the answers to the questions that your people have in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, let's start off just talking about, you know, what is a spirit of Jezebel? And this is something that people debate because many people say that Jezebel is a spirit of control or that Jezebel is a spirit of manipulation. And that is not true. That has been a common teaching and that is not true. This is an error. And this is why so many people are continually afflicted by the Jezebel spirit because they don't know what they're fighting. Jesus said in Revelation 2.20, as I mentioned many times when I speak of Jezebel, he said, I have this against you, uh, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel. You might as well say you tolerate that spirit Jezebel, uh, who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce. So the Jezebel spirit at its core is a spirit of seduction. The spirit wants to seduce you. The, the spirit does use control and manipulation, but the spirit cannot control you until it seduces you. It seduces you in order to control you, to bring it in, in order to pull on your heartstrings, to play you like a puppet. And so uh, that's the Jezebel spirit. So then people ask, well, what is a Jezebel intercessor? A Jezebelic intercessor, as I talk about in my book, Unmasking Jezebel's Intercessors, is an intercessor who is under the influence of a Jezebel spirit. So an intercessor who's under the influence of a Jezebel spirit will do the bidding of Jezebel, will seek to wreak havoc on your prayer life, will begin to sabotage prayer meetings, will begin to pray witchcraft prayers against you. And this is very dangerous and it's very real. You know, I'm a pastor of the church here in South Florida, Awakening House of Prayer, but I'm also the 
uh, a founder of a global prayer movement called Awakening Prayer Hubs. I'd love for you to join us at AwakeningPrayerHubs.com. And over the years, I've seen how the spirit works firsthand. We've only had a few incidents in the prayer movement where Jezebel was able to rear her ugly head, but we had to see it and we had to deal with it swiftly because if you don't deal with Jezebel swiftly, you are at a massive disadvantage. And so uh, I've, I've wrestled, I've tussled uh, with the spirit of Jezebel many times over the years, and there's so many commonalities to it, uh, but uh, it, it is a spirit of seduction. A Jezebelic intercessor is an intercessor who has been seduced by Jezebel because of hurts, because of wounds, because of issues in their heart that are unresolved, and now they are trying to exert their will over God's will. They want their way instead of God's way, and so many times they will pray in opposition to God's will, and you can hear their prayers just kind of sound off. Have you ever noticed that? If somebody's prayers, they just sound off. It's not that they can't pray well. It's not that they can't, you know, touch God. It, 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 it's just there's something behind it. There's something, you know, they might sound like they're, in other words, they might sound very eloquent. They might sound like they have the heart of God. They might sound like they're touching heaven. Uh, but in other words, many times they are not. They are uh, praying in pretense. They are praying undercover. They are praying against God's will. You can sound eloquent and not be praying in the will of God. You know, this one lady came in to our ministry many years ago, and she could literally pray heaven down. I mean, it was like, she was like, wow. I mean, I was very impressed by how she prayed. And turns out she was praying with the wrong motive. She was praying with the wrong agenda. She was not sincere in her prayer. She was trying to pretend to be someone she wasn't so that everyone would want them to pray for her. Catch that. I said she was trying to, she was, tr she was praying under pretense. She was praying in a way that just sounded like she knew God. She was going to be a martyr for Jesus. She was going to touch, you know, the, the hem of his garment. And it was just so spiritual. And she was trying to impress people so that they would come to her and that she could pray and seduce them through information seeking. Jezebel wants to know what your heart, what your hurts and what your pains are so she can pray for you. Well, she's not really praying for you. She's praying, P-R-E-Y-I-N-G. She's praying on you. And so to be very careful, don't share your intimate details of your life with people that you don't know just because they pray really eloquently. Don't do that. Let's look at one of these questions here. Does the Jezebel spirit work through narcissists and how do you discern whether it's the spirit and or the works of the flesh? Well, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of common characteristics between a narcissist and a Jezebel spirit. There's a lot of common characteristics between a narcissist and a Jezebelic spirit. However, these are not the same thing. Now, someone who has a, is a narcissist may have a Jezebel spirit. Someone with a Jezebel spirit may be a narcissist. The traits are very similar, but some, listen, someone can be a narcissist without having a demon. Someone can have a Jezebelic spirit and have narcissistic tendencies without being a narcissist. So we have to be very careful because now in the, the new thing, the new trend is to say, well, Jezebel and narcissism is the same thing. It's not the same thing. They have a lot of the same characteristics. It's like saying a monkey and a chimpanzee are the same thing. They're not the same thing. They share a lot of characteristics that are common, but they're not the same thing. Okay. So we have to be very careful. They, they do seem very similar, but they're not the same thing. Jezebel is a spirit. Narcissism is is a is a mindset, right? It's it's a self important mindset, and they they can work together, but they're not exactly the same thing. Here's another question: What if your pastor doesn't pick up on the Jezebelic intercessor in the church, but as a seer prophet, you do? Well, bless God, you have to pray and pray without ceasing. Because Jezebel always wants to cozy up to the leader. Jezebel wants to serve the leader. Jezebel will hide these Jezebelic tendencies and behaviors from the leader. Jezebel doesn't want the leader to see that spirit. Je that's why this, the book is called Unmasking Jezebel's Intercessors. Because they hide. They, 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 they're willing to do anything that... 
is necessary in the church or in the ministry or in the workplace. They'll work long hours. They'll do whatever they can to help the leader so that the leader will defend them when others say, that's a Jezebel. So chances are, unless you have a proven track record of accuracy with this pastor, unless you have a good, strong, long-term relationship with the pastor, unless you've been through a trial before with the pastor where you've been able to work through a conflict, the the, the leader's not going to see it and they may not believe you. As a matter of fact, you may get persecuted for calling out the Jezebel. So what you have to do is pray, pray, and pray some more. You've got to pray without ceasing. You've got to ask God to expose it. You've got to ask God to remove any person from the ministry or the business that doesn't belong there. You've got to pray uh, that the leader will begin to see it, that the spirit will overplay its hand and expose itself. You have to pray in those ways. The question is, why is Jezebel so hard to cast out? Well, let me just, there's some people who will not agree with me, uh, and uh, but I'm telling you, I believe that I am right. They believe that they are right, but you, Jezebel does not live in you. Jezebel does not live in you. Jezebel is a principality, which is really Ashtoreth. Now, you need to be biblically literate to understand this. So Ashtoreth was the uh, demon power, the principality that Jezebel served. Her Jezebel, the, new, the, the Old Testament Jezebel, her father was um, uh, Ethbel. His, her father was, was the, the high priest of Baal. And so Jezebel grew up, the queen Jezebel, before she was queen, she was a princess. She grew up serving Baal in Ashtoreth. So this Jezebel spirit, what we call Jezebel is really Ashtoreth. It is an ancient principality. And we call it Jezebel because the women in the Bible who were influenced by the spirit were named Jezebel. So that's a that's just a common vernacular that we use, kind of like all doctors use the name cancer. Anywhere in the world, everybody knows what cancer is. Somebody had to name it cancer. Somebody had to decide that it was going to be named cancer. And someone had to adopt this as a general medical term for this affliction called cancer. We call it Jezebel. It's really a principality. Principalities do not live in people. Principalities do not live in people. And so the Jezebel spirit does not live in you. Why it's so hard to cast out, first of all, does not live in you? But what you're trying to do is you're, you're trying to get rid of the open doors that the Jezebel spirit has to influence the person. And that is typically hurts and wounds. The Jezebel spirit targets people who have hurts and wounds. And so if you can resolve the hurts and wounds, then you'll, you can cast out rejection. You can cast out fear. You may cast out control. You may cast out manipulation. You may cast out witchcraft. You may cast out many things, but once you get the person delivered from the pain, the hurts, the wounds, that spirit won't be able to lie to them in the way that it did or influence them. They'll begin to shun it. They'll begin to cast down imaginations. They'll begin to, uh, to walk pure and holy and blameless with their mind on Jesus. Amen. Someone asks, can a man have a Jezebel spirit? Absolutely. I've known men that have had them. The man can have a Jezebel spirit. Anybody that tells you otherwise doesn't understand spiritual dynamics. This is not a, there's no gender in the spirit. Demons are, are not, it, it's, it's, you know, there's not male and female demons. They're, they're, you know, all angels are technically male. And you can argue with me on that as well. Uh, but, but there are no, there are no, there's no female demons. So it, it's just, it's just. Jezebel's a shape-shifting spirit to begin with, but that's another conversation. So yes, a man can have a Jezebel spirit. Absolutely can have a Jezebel spirit. Can have definitely a Jezebel spirit. If the leader, and here's the question. If the leader prays against or curses people with their prayers, is that part of what a Jezebel spirit influences a person to do? Such as you won't hear the cry of a baby in your house because a person didn't necessarily want to attend a baby shower for a member. Well, that's terrible. Yeah. So, so not all curses come from Jezebel, but people who are influenced by Jezebel's spirit, Jezebel's inter intercessors will release curses on people. 
people who are influenced by a Je because Jezebel is uh, a spirit of seduction, but Jezebel is a murderous spirit. Remember the spirit of Jezebel in the Bible would murder the prophets of the Lord, would slaughter the prophets of the Lord. And Jezebel set up Naboth to kill him uh, with a lie. And so Jezebelic intercessors release prophetic witchcraft. They release curses. They release judgment. And yeah, you're saying someone cursed and said, you won't hear the cry of a baby in your house. But, but just because, listen, just because someone curses you doesn't mean that they're operating in a Jezebel spirit. Just because someone curses you doesn't mean they're operating in a Jezebel spirit. The question is, what does one do if one has confronted a church pastor and leadership about a Jezebel problem in the congregation, but they attack you and don't want to acknowledge or deal with the problem and cast out the spirit? So basically, this person has identified there's a Jezebel intercessor. They've taken it to the leader and the leader is saying, I'm not buying it. Well, the leader is deceived or you're wrong. Those are the two options. The leader is deceived or you're wrong. And so you have to search your heart, first of all, and say, am I missing it? Am I biased? Do I just not like this person? Is the enemy deceiving me? Or is the pastor deceived? Now, from that point, if you're right and the pastor's wrong, understand that they're under a witchcraft attack. They're not seeing it because the, this Jezebelic intercessor has been a blessing to them. And they're just, they just can't see it. Number one. Number two, they're under a witchcraft attack. You know, there was a wonderful man of God one time who uh, there was an incident that occurred and it was between me and somebody else. And I'd known this man of God for, you know, 10 years. And this other person was, you know, known for about six months. And this leader actually came against me and actually spoke to other leaders saying that I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. And the other leaders that he told that told him he was wrong. And it turned out that he was under this witchcraft attack from someone who was operating in, in, in massive Jezebelic witchcraft. He couldn't see it. And that witchcraft was causing him to turn against me. So what did I do in that case? I prayed and I trusted God. And I believe that a good name is better to be chosen, that my reputation would go before me and clear the air. And it turns out uh, this wonderful man of God, you know, he was put through the ringer by this this person, but ultimately saw the truth. And that's the best we can hope for. Now, if you're at a church and there's Jezebelic intercessors running the show or Jezebelic pastors, you have to make a decision. Am I going to leave or am I going to come up under the spirit? Too many people decide I'm going to sit there and I'm going to pray. I'm not going to leave. I'm going to pray. But over time, you can sit there and pray for a little while. And maybe God will assign you to sit there and pray for a little while. But over time, you know, if nothing's changing, you're not called to sit in a church where Jezebel's ruling the roost forever. And if God has shown you this and you're praying and the prayer burden lifts and you don't recognize that the prayer burden has lifted and you continue to insist that you're going to stay there and pray, that deception will come over you and you'll start having a portal of hell opened up over your life and you'll start seeing the impact of Jezebel's witchcraft on you. And so, you know, I was in a church one time where this, you know, the, clearly the, it was Ahab and Jezebel, the head of the church, clearly. And this one prophet was in the church and they had already crucified her. They'd already stripped her and they they'd castrated her. And, you know, she was the head intercessor and she was, uh, she called them out. She said, the glory of God's going to leave this church is Ichabod. Lord says, you got to get things in order. Well, they crucified her. They wouldn't let her teach, wouldn't let her pray, wouldn't let her do anything. And she stayed in that church and is still in that church 14 years later. It has become a eunuch. And so if you stay in a church where the Holy Spirit's show, trying to tell you, get out. And you're, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And the Holy Spirit's nudging you to get out. I'm going to pray. I'm gonna, you're going to end up a eunuch. You're going to end up powerless. You're going to end up miserable. You're going to end up afflicted. You're going to end up sick. Don't sit in a church where you know, listen, you can pray for them from the outside, beloved. You don't have to be in the church to pray for them. Don't be up under that witchcraft. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. The question is, I think the prophetess leading the prayer group in my church is a Jezebel. <laughs> when she gets information from God, I see her eyes roll back into her head. 
She also knew things I wrote on my phone. She tried to raise false accusations against me. No one seemed to notice. What should I do? Well, you know, it could be a Jezebel spirit or it could be a familiar spirit that she's operating in. So we have to be very careful in the spirit to be accurate. Paul said, I don't fight as one who beats the air, right? You know, because once you're aware of the Jezebel spirit, what happens is you start seeing Jezebel everywhere. And the last thing we want to do is go on a witch hunt. Now, you know, it it does look as if this person may have some kind of demonic activity going on. But since I don't know more about the issue, I can't really comment. But if it were me and, uh, you know, I was in a place where I was being accused, uh, I would probably leave uh, and just uh, move on. You know, too many people, I think, uh, or I'd confront it, you know, uh, depends on how mature I, I was at the time. I was in a church for eight years and Jezebel took over and, you know, I, Lord told me to go in peace. And when I left, a lot of other people left, even though I never said anything. So we have to be very, very careful uh, in order to discern rightly what spirit that we are dealing with. Someone asks, do the people that are operating in this Jezebel spirit know that they're operating in a Jezebel spirit? Um, sometimes they do, and sometimes they do not. Sometimes they do, and sometimes they do not. I think the, the more advanced they are, the more they know. But what happens eventually is, is that their conscience is seared like a hot iron. That's in scripture. Many times their conscience is seared like a hot iron. And so they, they, they stopped being aware. The Holy, they, they shoved, listen, they shoved off the Holy Spirit conviction. They ignored the Holy Spirit conviction. They did not heed the Holy Spirit's conviction. And after a while, you just get turned over uh, to a, a reprobate mind or to a mind that's been seared like, you, you don't have a conscience anymore. You just, you want what you want when you want it. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Let's see what else that we have here. When did I encounter? So the question is, when did you encounter a Jezebel intercessor and how to deal with them? Uh, well, you know, I've uh, too many to too, get the book. And there's too, I'm not going to sit here and tell stories all day because that'll we'll be here all day. But get the book and uh, you'll get the answer to that question. That's too long of a question there. Hallelujah. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. The question is, so a Jezebel will come into a community and be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Well, um, yes, but they don't always know it. We just talked about that. So let's look here. So Jezebel appears to be a good Christian. The question is, does Jezebel appear at first to be a good Christian? And the answer is yes. We had this one woman who came in and bless her heart, she just was there every time the doors were open. She vacuumed the floor. She cleaned the toilets. She met different vendors at the church, the AC guy, the county inspector, but she was operating in the spirit. And we tried to get her free. We tried to get her delivered and nothing we did worked. And why is that? Because she didn't want to forgive. She didn't want to let go of the offense. She didn't want to let go of the control. She was completely deceived. Some people don't want to get free. They just don't. They need an encounter with God. They need an encounter with God. The Jezebel spirit is a sabotaging spirit. Jezebel spirit is a sabotaging spirit. Hallelujah. The Jezebel spirit is a sabotaging spirit. Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. The question is, is the Jezebel spirit one who moves a person to pray out of their own desires and manipulate their way to fulfill their own desires instead of leaning into God's open heart with listening ears and praying into out of what God shares of his heart. Jezebel, here's the thing. Jez, people who are influenced by a Jezebel spirit, intercessors who are influenced by a Jezebel spirit. Here, here's where it gets really tricky, guys. Listen, listen very closely. People who are influenced by a Jezebel spirit they sometimes will pray the will of God. They are sometimes touching the heart of God. And sometimes they'll pray witchcraft prayers. Sometimes they'll pray their will. 
instead of instead of God's will. Sometimes they'll pray what they want instead of what God wants. But now here's the thing. Sometimes we all pray what God wants instead of, uh, I mean, rather, sometimes we all pray what we want instead of God, what God wants, right? Any of us can just pray selfishly. So that's not what marks a Jezebel spirit. It's the spirit through which they're praying. You know, scripture says, pray in the spirit, right? Pray in the spirit at all times, pray in the spirit. That doesn't just mean praying in tongues. It means praying by the leadership of the spirit. And so there's times when any of us could pray in the flesh. We could pray out of a spirit of fear, begging God, crying and screaming out. We could pray out of a spirit of Jezebel. And so the, when, when some, so someone could be praying rightly one moment, and then all of a sudden they're praying Jezebelic prayers. And, and they're praying prayers to manipulate. This one woman was told me, she told me, she said, she, she goes, I'm praying that God will remove this person because I know I'm supposed to have that position. So I'm praying that God will remove the person that's currently the director because I know I'm supposed to be the director. Well, that's that's absolute witchcraft. That, that's, that should be a prayer of consecration. If it be thy will, O Lord, right? And here's, here's one more. Uh, the question is, are people to pray for you but are, are from maybe the Catholic religion praying to Mary for you, a Jezebel intercessor, or people with selfish motives praying what they want to happen in your life. So this has nothing really to do with people that, pray, that are praying to Mary. We know that there's only one mediator between God and man. His name is Jesus Christ. We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. There's nothing in Scripture that says we're to pray to Mary, to Peter, to Paul, to James, none of that. That is not biblically sound. But it's not. Jezebel's intercessors aren't necessarily people who are praying to Mary for you. God's not hearing those prayers anyway. It, that can release witchcraft, though, because it's idolatry. It's idolatry. It's idol and it's rebellion to the word of God, which says pray to Father in the name of Jesus. But it's, Jezebel's intercessors are praying things that they want. They're praying their will. They're trying to twist God's arm. And somehow they think that they're going to be fruitful in that endeavor. Amen. They think they're going to be fruitful in that endeavor. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. I'm going to do another one of these Q&As, but right now I'm going to pray for you. Remember my book, Unmasking Jezebel's Intercessors. You can find that on my website at Jeze uh, jenniferleclair.org slash Jezebel. You can also find a bunch of courses at schoolofthespirit.tv slash Jezebel. Jezebel. So if you're interested in learning, there's a uh, this, this book. I've got lots of other books and I've also got lots of other classes. So you can find all about that. Everything's there. Schoolofthespirit.tv slash Jezebel. Right now, this is launch week of the book. It's number one on Amazon. If you want to get it with some bonus materials that are free for you, go buy a copy through my website, click the button, jenniferleclair.org slash uh, Jezebel and come back to it. I want to pray for you, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you that you help us, Lord, not to fall prey to Jezebel, but to be discerning, not to go on a witch hunt, but to be compassionate, hoping that all would come to repentance. Lord, help us, Lord, give us eyes to see and ears to hear uh, the, the, what the, who, the the real Jezebel, not, not casting aspersions, not making false accusations, but clearly discerning this spirit at work in our prayer meetings and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you guys. Have a breakthrough day.